Here's hopefully a quick video on how to um, fix a flashlight if you lost the inserts. This is a UV light for finding scorpions made by Cobra. Anyway, I got it to Goodwill because um, somebody lost the inserts, most likely, and doesn't work. The light does actually work. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with lights today, especially flashlights, that when you unscrew them, instead of them taking a stack of batteries in a straight line, you now use these. These are AAA, and you would drop them inside. They don't fit because these are not made for this flashlight. Um, but this is a 9-volt flashlight. It would take 4.5 volts in one, 4.5 volts in the other. You stick them in, screw it down, you're good to go didn't come with them. So, we are going to make this flashlight run on 9 volt. If you want to run longer, you can make it run on 2 9 volts. But the 9 volt fits perfectly inside the tube, and the tube is long enough to fit two of them in there. <clears throat> but you take the bottom off. If you do convert it, you don't need the spring. You can leave it in there if you want. You can pop it out. Unscrew the face. The lens is separate, so don't drop the lens. If you do, you'll scratch it. And then the lights lights are attached to a circuit board with two wires. This right here in the center is what's connected to the switch, and then the blue wire, which is the negative, is connected to a snap ring because this whole body, being aluminum, is the ground or negative. You will need a set of snap ring pliers. You can do it with needle nose pliers if they're small enough, or two picks. Um, a small set of snap ring pliers set for squeezing. So they spring open, squeeze it. We're going to go in here. You might not be able to see with my hand in the way. We're going to squeeze the ring so we can pull the ring out. Like so. What this does is there's a block in here that holds the switch in and isolates the batteries from the circuit board. So I'm going to grab the block and walk it out. You have to walk it out because it's a tight fit. One, two, the switch is attached or it fits in this groove. Uh, it might be hard to see, but the inside of this body is full of white corrosion. Yeah, you can see right there, because the battery's exploded. And that's probably why they got rid of it. Now, I already know the lights work. I already tested them. They're UV lights again, so they're uh, purple, purplish blue when they're on camera. But to do all this, we're going to wire this in. I need it to still be interrupted by the switch. So we're going to solder the hot wire here. And I'm going to drill a hole in this block and then bring the hot wire up, or excuse me, the ground wire, and solder it to this one. Now, there is some rust on this, because I'm sure this was used in the outdoor environment as well as indoor. So, let's get a small piece of sandpaper, and I'm going to clean off some of this rust. edges because the edges is what actually makes contact with the body of the flashlight so we definitely need to make sure we have a good connection so the lights don't flicker uh, most flashlights out there that especially if they're used outdoors rains snows you will build up corrosion on the inside not only if the batteries explode like this one doing it. I'm not going to clean the whole ring. I'm just doing the contact area and a spot up top so I can solder the wire on. If you want to do the whole ring, you can do it. I just need enough surface area on the edge to fit on the inside of this lip, which is still shiny because it's aluminum and the battery acid didn't get that high into corrosion. I got the soldering iron on. I got a micro drill and I'm going to drill a hole in this plastic box or block. Um, just 
going to use this as a spacer, and this is so I can feed the wire up to the negative. Guess I didn't have it tight enough, but still got the hole. So that way we can feed this black wire. straight up through, and then solder it to the snap ring. Now normally I wouldn't do this to standard flashlights, because flashlights are relatively inexpensive relatively being the key word because there are some out there that are freaking out outrageous but this cobra scorpion light for detecting scorpions is um i think we looked it up it was about 30 bucks brand new and i got it for six a little over six so you know six dollar light that just needs a battery pack replacement that's not a bad deal. This soldering pen I don't think is going to be hot enough to melt the solder because this whole curve is a heat sink. So the soldering pen is trying to heat up this entire snap ring. That is why the soldering gun designed for big pools of solder or large areas that have a large heat sink dis uh, dissipation. And it gets hotter faster. I've had the soldering iron on before I started the video just because it takes a while to get hot. This gets hot real fast. So, let's do this again. the uh, solder joint on the original wire. Might have to use a little assistance here. Three hands would be great, but I haven't uh, mutated into that yet. Okay, so that's now soldered. I'm probably going to have the same issue with this due to the fact it's a large surface area. And because it hasn't had solder on it before, there's a good chance that it's not going to adhere very well. So I am going to put a dab of flux, corrosive flux, just to help with adhesion. And since I already got the soldering gun out, I'm just going to use this. I just turned off the soldering iron, or the soldering pen. No point in having it on anymore. You can do this with a soldering pen if it gets really hot. And you just have to take time to heat up the surface to the point where it melts your solder. You know what? I have a tool for this. big old solder glob and now we're gonna get that solder glob to hold that on for me. Done. Move some stuff out of the area and let that cool down doesn't uh, burn my forearm while I'm doing stuff. 
Now to put this thing back together. So, the switch fits inside of this notch. Like so. And this is a click on, click off switch. When it's clicked off, the button is actually higher. So we're going to click it on. I'm going to feed down the 9 volt wire. And I use an extra long one so I can pull it out the bottom. Make it easier to change the battery, of course. I just realized I soldered the, uh, I fed the black wire through and it's upside down. I'm sure maybe you guys already saw that. So that's an easy fix. Right there it has to be on the top because this is a tapered block. So if you screw up like I did, uh, quickly fix it. I'm not perfect. I do make mistakes, as most of us do. Thank God most of them are small mistakes and are easily fixable. Just retenning everything. So we have fresh solder. And this time to make it slightly easier. It's too steep. I'm going to uh, use the helping hands. All right, get the dust off that. All right, so we'll put the switch back in the notch, feed the nine volt down. So if y'all wanna see what it looks like since it technically is all hooked up. what she looks like. And so push the nine volt in. It's 
tight at the top because there's just the switch rubber. I just had to push it back that way. Normally you just put it in from the bottom and it fits perfect. It's just I had to get it over this rubber cap. Now it's going to take a little finagling, apparently. It's not the first one I've done. I don't know why this one's giving me problems. Probably because it's the first one I've done on camera. It's not the first battery conversion I've done on a flashlight. Usually they're pretty easy. The problem was that the ground wire was getting caught on the switch's rubber. So, should hopefully now just slide right in. Wherever I put the pliers. I was pushing it in, this plug was grabbing the ground wire and wrapping it around the rubber boot. I didn't notice that. That was my biggest issue. And click. You heard it. Hopefully you heard the click. That's the block seating. Now we need to put the grounding C-ring on, or snap ring, or Jesus ring. There's a whole bunch of nicknames for this bad boy. You use these a lot on cars or other small projects. You might call them a, an oh shit ring or a Jesus ring because when it shoots off the end of your pliers, you usually scream Sh oh shit or Jesus. Because they usually fly into, well, some other dimension because you can never seem to find them. Seated. Because you want to make sure that Jesus clip doesn't touch the hot. So you got to make sure everything's seated in its place. So just let's use a screwdriver. There we go. All I'm doing is making sure that the ring is fully into its groove so we get good connection on the ground and it's not touching the hot in any way, shape, or form. And then, because the wires, if you stuck it in straight, they bind. If you rotate the disc when you put it back in, the disc of lights, 
you uh, you don't risk damaging the lights. And now, let's plug in the battery. Like so, plug it back in. should be. Put the lens back on. Put the waterproofing o-ring back on the back. Like I said, you can fit two 9 volts in here and stack them. I'm not going to do that. I'm not probably going to use this enough to care. But if you wire them in parallel, you can get twice the longevity out of it. 9 volts being expensive, I don't feel like wasting the two 9 volts I have on making this last longer. Tighten the cap. And you can see the screwdriver is glowing. Let's kill some lights to make it a little easier to see. A little darker. So. I'm going to kill another set of lights real fast and we'll double check everything. So you can see the screwdriver is glowing, anything white is glowing, because it is a uh, UV light, and this is used to find scorpions, of course being a UV light, find a few other things too if you're looking, <laughs> but there it is blinding out the camera, you can see it doesn't flicker, it doesn't care, so it's a very basic conversion, normally it's easier to do, like I said. I've done this before on other lights where people have converted mag lights to the uh, lithium ion batteries. And I've never had as many difficulties as this one all of a sudden. So, it's a relatively quick video on how to convert a Cobra Scorpion light from a pack of triple A's, or excuse me, double A's, two of them, that got lost. To a still switch on, switch off, uh, 9 volt. So, short, sweet, hopefully you enjoyed it, but that's it. Now I can go scorpion hunting. Hopefully I don't find any, at least not in the house. <laughs> Alright, till the next one. Have a good one.